Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. Parental causes is our topic for this service. Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. And I want to thank every one of you for coming to church this morning. Your presence is highly honored. The Lord bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And he said, are we there? He was Noah. Noah. And he said, Curse be Canaan. A servant of servant shall he be unto his brethren. All of us know the background story. After Noah came out from the ark, his father made a drink, and the Bible says he was drunk. It has many meaning in the Greek and in the literal interpretation. But then one of his sons, Ham, came and saw the father nakedness and laughed at it and told his brothers. But when the brothers saw it, they went backward and covered their father's nakedness. So when the father woke up, he, he, the, it was his son, Ham, that did it. But he didn't cause Ham. He caused the fourth child of Ham. So Ham did it, and Ham had four children. So he didn't cause the first son, second son, third son. He caused the fourth son. And he said, cause be Canaan. When you read the story before, it was harm, but he did not cause harm. And I explained the reason to us. What was the reason? Yes, God has blessed harm already. You are a good student. So because God has blessed you, you cannot be cursed. You cannot cause somebody that has been blessed. Just like the way God did not cause Adam. God caused the ground and not Adam. Why? Because he has already blessed Adam, so he could not be cursed. Are we together? So he cursed Canaan, and Canaan was the black son of Ham. And he said, a servant of servant we shall be. That is why, and then geographically, historically, Africans are the descendant. Middle East is Jephthah. That is the way you can read history and tell you how the sons of Noah, because the Bible says, by these three sons of Noah was the whole earth overspread. So some of them settled in, and um, not post, they, they were history that explained. And the one that came to Africa was Canaan, the black one. Hallelujah. So a servant of servant, that is what we are called the third world nations. So like a house girl of a house girl. Not a servant, you'll be a servant of servant. So we must understand this topic because all of us here have parents or somebody that represents a parent in your life. Now, there are powers that parents have over children. Number one is parents can see the future of their children. Parents have the ability to look at their child and they will know what will be the end. In Genesis 25, verse 22 to 24, when Rebekah was pregnant with the baby she had, she went and prayed to God and said, Lord, what is happening? Then God told her, two children or two nations are in your womb. The lesser or the younger will be served by the greater. So that was why when Isaac wanted to bless Esau, because she saw the future and it was a woman that saw, maybe the man did not see. She insisted that what she saw came to pass. Are we together? In Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. I wanted to read verse 1. Genesis 49 verse 1. Oh, let's read Genesis 25 verse so that we can be able to. Genesis 25 verse 22. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I first? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one shall be stronger than the other people, and the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So God told her the future of their children. Though the father saw it before the children were born, the mother. Now Genesis 49 verse 1. And Jacob, look, listen to what he said. Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that we shall befall you in the last days. Are we together? So he said, Come around, let me tell you what will happen to your life. Then he started with Reuben, You, this is this. Judah, you, this is this, this is this, this is this. 
So many of us, our parents have seen a lot about us. That is why I learned to ask my father about my history, about my birth. There are many things that have happened when you were given birth to. Some of them were significant. Some of them saw their future. I remember when I was coming to serve in Kogis, my father told me that he saw me going, crossing a river when I was going to serve. He knew that I was coming to this state. So sometimes parents can see. And who else will God tell you about your future than your parents? So they have that power to see into your future. Number two is parents can speak to affect and shape your future. When your biological father, I'm not, when I say parental cause, I'm talking about biological parental causes. Now we have spiritual parents, all those, but I'm talking about biological now. When, it, when Genesis 49, verse 1 to 10, when Jacob spoke, that was how his children became. What he said concerning Reuben was what Reuben became. What he said concerning Judah. What he said, all of them. What he said concerning Dan, a troop shall overcome you. That was a madman, a gatherer, Dan, and then all these kind of stories. It was a Danite. What the father said was what happened, copy and paste. In first Samuel chapter 1 verse 11, what Hannah said of Samuel was what he became. So when your father spoke, there are some of them he spoke evil of, like Reuben. He said, Reuben, unstable at water, you will not excel. Reuben, when they were about to enter the land of Canaan, some of them came and said they, want, they don't want to go because they have seen a green grass. The descendants were orangus. You will not excel. That was it. Hallelujah. So when they speak, they have a potent force to shape your future. Hallelujah. So like the way I am shaping the future of my children and my daughter or, or, or many things. To speak and say, this one must serve God. Are we together? This one must serve God. So some of us growing up shaped. The way your life is going is as a result of what has been said over you by your parents. Number three, parents have the power to bless and to curse. In Genesis 27 verse 12, Jacob was saying, if by adventure I get a curse instead of a blessing, that means... A father can bless and curse. A mother cannot only bless, she can also curse. And then finally, number four, our parents have the role to model and shape and nature and nurture or nature. And then also to train their children. That is why Proverbs 22 verse 6. They train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from me. You know? One time I was asking the Lord, so what about pastor's children that grew up and became orangus? And then the parents will be saying, but I trained you well. God said that you either believe their parents or believe my word. Because the word says, if you train them well, they will not leave. So that means the person was not trained well. Come on, out together. Because you may think you have trained them well, but you didn't train them well. So we must know these things. Number one is that good degrees, good certificates... A good paying job. Healthy living lifestyle cannot undo parental causes. When you have, you have graduated, you have good certificate, MSS, VIV, all those certificates, Canada. And there is a parental cause in your life. It will never neutralize it. When you have a good paying job and your father or your mother says a negative things over your life, you may be earning millions and then it will be useless. Come on, now we together. You can be earning six billion or six million or any amount. But when your father says you will not prosper in this life, you will earn that money and retire in a rented apartment. Come on, now we together. Healthy living. You can be living healthy. Only eating vegetables. Not even protein at all. Taking fruits. Watching red light. Very, very healthy. But if there is a cause of death, of health, of sickness from your parent, that healthy living cannot neutralize that curse. Number two is, we must avoid traps that lead us to reacting to our parent negatively. In a 
Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Of course, Ephesians chapter 6 is the story that talks about children obeying their parents. But after talking about that in chapter 1 to 3, he gave an instruction to parents. And I can remember one time I quoted these scriptures to my dad. In my ignorance. In my ignorance. Hallelujah. And ye fathers, you know, children obey your parents the Lord. Honor your father. Verse 3. Then verse 4. He spoke to the parent. Say, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. That means, parent can provoke you to wrath. There are some parents that do certain things that some children, like, you are provoked legally by your parent. Come on, now together. Now, God has warned them, don't react to their provocation. Because some of them are traps by the devil to get you to react. Noah provoked the son by drinking and smoking, and when he woke up, he cursed him, and God confirmed it. Come on, all together. You were drunk, and the child laughed, and the father woke up in the drunken state, cursed him, and God confirmed. So even though you are legally provoked, don't be led to react. Avoid the parent like danger because it's really danger. So parents are advised not to provoke and those of us that are becoming parents, may God give you the grace not to provoke your children. And those of us that are children, may you not fall to the trap of provocation. Say so your father makes you angry, eh? You don't know what you are saying. Your mother can provoke you, you are not afraid. Never be provoked. You are very stupid. Yes, sir. You are, yes, ma. Anything they say. Come on, now together. Don't be provoked. Because in their anger and provocation, and it is due, they will curse you and God will confirm it. Number three thing we must never understand is that the Bible. Allow disobedience to parent only when the instruction is against the Lord. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children, is it up? Let's read together. Are we together? Or we are writing? All right, let's read together. Let's go. Children, Obey your parents in the Lord. Don't forget that you must obey your parents in the Lord. Hallelujah. For this is right. Verse 2. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Verse 3 says that it might be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on earth. So, when the father says, sit down, sit down. Especially when it's in the law. Come on, now we're together. When your father, I have a child, like, why his father says, smoke this as pen? He says, no, sir. Because that instruction is not in the law. Are you following? The Bible did not say, obey your father that did not beat your mother. Why do you disobey your father? Because he's beating my mother. That was what the Bible says. Bible did not say obey your father that is not beating your mother. Say, if it's your father, obey him. The Bible did not say obey your father that did not marry another woman. If it's your father, obey him. The Bible said, did not, did not obey your father that paid your school fees. My father was not there when I was not growing up. That was not what the Bible says. Come, are you are you following or you're not following? Obey your father that paid your school fees. That's what the Bible says. You're not answering me. Obey your fathers that was giving you money for shopping. Obey your father that was always there for you. Obey your father that 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 what that, that was pampering. Obey your father. No, that was not the Bible. Obey your father that did not cheat on your mother. Is that what the Bible says? Okay. Obey your mother that was faithful to your father. Obey your mother that took care of you. Even if they gave back to you and left you, if it was his spam, you are a product of obeying. Come on, all together. 
Are you following at all? Number four. Many rebellion of children is caused by ignorance. <clears throat> and sometimes <laughs> small help from their mother. Many children rebel against their father because of ignorance and then sometimes their mom help them to disobey and dishonor their father. <clears throat> because many people don't know they have dishonored their parent. Hallelujah. I need this fan to face me, please. Out of ignorance, they have rebelled against their parent. Praise the Lord. And then sometimes their mothers help them just a bit higher. And then sometimes the mother help them to disobey and to dishonor. Now, because many people don't know the consequences, they grew up in rebellious, in, in rebellion to their parent, dishonoring and fighting and quarreling with their parent. I know I watched it before my own eyes. I think it would be good now. I watched it before my own eyes. A young girl fighting with her mother and then pulling her rapper away. Hallelujah. Dangerous things. And so sometimes our mothers help us. Why? Because fathers don't talk much at home. I don't know if your father talk a lot. Fathers don't talk. So children grew up with their mother. They were sucking their breasts. The father was not having breasts. They were going anywhere with their mother. So naturally, there is a natural affinity with the mother. When the father comes back from work, the stress and the pressure of life doesn't have much time to talk. He was not always available. So most times, most children, they slatted in the mother and say, you see your father. They tear toward the mother. Because the father don't have time to explain. Your father does not take care of what the father is like this, the father is like this. And then your father doesn't have time to explain himself. Not knowing that your, your mother can be a good mother and a bad wife. Are you following me? She's a good mother to you, but to the husband is danger. She's not giving him sex. Come back from home tired and they're looking at him without dishonoring him. Not honoring him, not giving him food. She will feed the children and then the man is come back. Forget him to what? No, no, no. Like, to the man is hell. But to you, she am a good man. A... But to the man. Some of our pets, you many people don't know what their fathers went through with the woman. And then some of the mother says, see your father, then you too with your big head. <laughs> it's like you're the one siding your mother against your father. See, I will, you need to understand that parental fatherly words are stronger. It's not comparable to mother. Why didn't Rebecca bless Jacob? Why didn't she bless him? Why did she have to connive to get the blessing? Because it's the father that has it. So our mother can say, I see your father. You see your mother. In the behalf, she didn't know what she's doing to you. And then you grow up fighting your father in ignorance. No knowing what the man is going to do. You will marry. And you'll know what women can do. Hallelujah. They will look simply gentle to the children. My mother, my father is harsh to my mother. My mother is this, my mother is this, my mother is this, my mother is this. Why is my father like this? Why is he talking to her like this? Why is my father talking to my mother like that? You don't know the way she has reacted to him. Disrespect, the man is feeling as if he's a child in his own house. When you see him vent one anger, you don't know what he's facing in the bedroom because men are strong, they don't talk. So the mother now says, <laughs> You too, because you have a certificate now. You cannot take it from our mother. We cannot take it. Um, this cannot so I can speak for her. We have to be careful. Come on, all together. And as mothers, you must tell the heart of your children to your fathers. What you tell them is what they will hear. Come on, all together. Tell them when your father is coming, run to the door and collect him. My, see, there was one thing my mom did that I will forever. That was why I prayed to marry my wife, my mother. Like, not once in my life I stand before this altar that my, my mom said, my father is this, my father. Not once. My mom's salary was times three, my father, times three in cash. 
We never knew until when I was done with university. Nobody knew. She would give him the money. He was the, we would be collecting the money from thinking it was coming from him. Never from him. Covered this man until I held my father's phone and I saw his salary. That was, ah, this daddy's salary because he was written in Kaduna State, something like that. Ah, my mother said, hey, hey, hey. yeah. Never. Never said, hey. The, she, the man was a king in his house. We never knew about it. Never is there to see your father. That, ah, no, never. She made us to know that this is the father. Another one said, hey, hey, hey. and then the children will not join their mother. Is that like children against mother? And most families are like that. Come on, now we're together. Never side with your. You don't know what, she, what the man is going through. Because he cannot explain himself. Come on, are we together? Number five is unmerited causes from the parent. If you don't deserve it, it will never happen. And then number six, we must understand that a husband can curse his wife and then he can also curse the children. Genesis 31 verse 32 to 35. Jacob said anybody that took the, the, the earth, Jacob was the reason why Rachel actually died. He declared a curse over her. So that is why your, the word of the husband towards the wife, the wife must be edifying. Must be good words. Because what you see about your wife is what she will become. Are we together? You must say the good. Now, 